We started with a very basic question. How small can a particle be? Can a droplet of water be and still form ice? Ice one is the ice in the mountains. It's the first of all, because it's the ice that we see under normal conditions. And what we found somehow surprisingly is that the size of the smaller cluster that can make ice is pretty small. It's just one nanometer in diameter. And this one nanometer is something with less than 100 molecules, a million times smaller than um, a snowflake. But maybe the most interesting and revealing part about this is not the size. When the clusters are maybe 150 molecules and still you have an ice well defined and it's becoming smaller, what you see is that the transition between ice and liquid changes in character. So this is the main finding of our study. We have seen this in simulations before, but actually not only we didn't have the experiments, but the, these experiments are extremely difficult to, uh, to interpret. So the big challenge was to bring together the experiments that they were big developments to really get to sample the state of clusters that have 90 or 95 or 100 molecules. Thanks to the development of very accurate models of water, mv Paul, and also many techniques related to molecular simulation and spectroscopy, this was also huge. So essentially, we have a confluence of three different teams with complementary expertise, and now we can show it. Water on these smaller sizes, like a few, a one nanometer of water, is not so no. So you can have sizes like these of water clusters inside proteins. Maybe more significantly in the upper atmosphere, you have also these temperatures that, at which we find the transitions between ice and liquid at the smaller sizes. And these transitions in the upper atmosphere also happen with a very small cluster. So this could really help understanding um, ice-liquid transformations at very, very high altitudes.